chaos in Nepal government has uh, been completely exposed after Nepalese land minister announced that they will send the new map to the UN and Google also to show it to the international community. Now, the foreign ministry of Nepal has told news exclusively that no such move has been planned. The ministry told us that they want dialogue with India first. So what should we make out of this double speak of the Nepalese government? Does it show complete chaos in Prime Minister Oli's cabinet? Joining us at this point is a special panel. Ambassador Deepak Bora, former diplomat and former Secretary of Ministry of External Affairs, is with us live. Uh, Major General Gigi Tiveri, uh, security analyst, also joins us live. Samit Pal Chaudhary, foreign affairs editor of the Hindustan Times, is live with us. Uh, Manish Pandey, editor of ITV Network, also joins us live at this point. From it, uh, let me begin with you first. Uh, you know, what are we to make of this double speak that is coming in from Nepal? Well, as we know, Prime Minister Oli is the main person raising his own several cities for a psychological war on the events of the future uh, and trying to survive. Uh, uh, Mr. Chaudhary, you'll have to speak a bit louder. Uh, as we know, yes. Prime Minister Oli has been waging a kind of psychological war against India, trying to bring the nationalist. Uh, sentiment in Nepal, in which India is a primary target, uh, and he's been using uh, what he's essentially aroused uh, and control of the territorial dispute with India uh, as part of that strategy. And he's also thrown another report of housing to the right of the house that's actually born in Arabia, but is actually born in the region in Nepal, uh, and in various other this is the latest attempt that is out here in a series of such things. So I would argue not so much as the aroused nature of the sentiment part of the country. But of course, India to respond in a manner that will allow them to grab them. Because simultaneously. I'm afraid we're going to have to come back to you. Uh, there's some technical trouble with uh, your connection. Let me. Uh, uh, go to uh, Major General Devedi at this point. Major General Devedi, uh, come in here on, of course, this double speak that is coming in from Nepal, your, your reading of it. And also, does this mean that obviously there are people within Oli's cabinet as well who disapprove of his policies, who are obviously uh, critical of how he's antagonizing India to such moves of claiming Indian territory? Absolutely, Uday, because uh, we have been following these uh, events for quite some time now, and there's a clear split or there is a clear division within the communist, uh, Nepalese Communist Party. Oli has a small group and then there is a Prachanda group. So therefore, what I have been trying to do is actually to serve his personal agenda at the cost of national interest. And he has been making one move after another and which I think his government has realized that they are not in the larger national interest. Just let me recall, it all started with the you know claiming of these uh, three territories of Kalapani and uh, Lipindira and Lipulik, then the amendment of the constitution, then getting it on the map, then came a couple of other issues like uh, there was certain tension on the border, border posts, border pillars. Then lately we were discussing how they want to now renegotiate the tripartite agreement between the two armies or between the British our army and the Nepalese Gurkhas. So all this, if you put together, one to two very important things. One is that Oli is pursuing his own agenda to keep himself in power. And there is definitely split, or I would call it the different interests are now being jockeyed. One is of the government and one is of the Kohli small group. And this is what is exactly coming out now because of the chaotic and also a uh, dichotomic uh, signals that we are getting about these issues. Absolutely. And, and you know, uh, uh, Ambassador Deepak Bora, in this scenario, uh, you know, uh, with these flip-flops happening in Nepal itself, you know, obviously this will leave India quite confused with the via Nepal policy. Thank you very much for this opportunity to learn from the brilliant minds on your panel. We are not confused at all. We see right through that man. Let me take a moment and tell you, sir, that I've been 47 years in this business. And KP Uli, with his obsession and his compulsion, I do want to call it OCD, risks becoming a court jester in the international community. I've seen this before, sir. We were two years ago 
a conference about improving agriculture in Africa. And then the Pakistani delegate said, you can't do anything with the Kashmir issue, we sort it out. Half the delegates looked at me and said, what's the problem with Kashmir? And they had no idea. But this character, by raising an issue of 400 square kilometers or whatever, Nepal is 148,000 square kilometers. Plus, states have life cycles similar to those of human beings who created them. They don't last more than a few generations. In my lifetime, I've seen the collapse of the Soviet Union, borders redefined. India, a partition. India was redefined. I mean, you've seen it, right? you've seen it in Sudan, you've seen it in Ethiopia, Eritrea, etc. Et borders get changed. Life cycle, life cycle of a state is limited like that of human beings. So what Mr. Odi is now trying to do um, is this conflict, and I've seen it in 25 cases, I was counting them today, where there's a conflict between national interest, national development. That means the interest of the nation and a desire to consolidate your personal power, to perpetuate yourself in office. I'm afraid in all the 25 cases that I studied, it's the personal desire that trumps the responsibility to see your country develop. And Mr. Odi seems to have fallen into that. Sending it to Google, who is Google? I'm not quite sure that the UN passed a resolution saying whatever Mr. Google says becomes uh, the gospel truth. I mean, it's not the new Bible. And sending it to the UN for what? They don't pass judgment on disputes and borders between uh, countries on the basis of maps that you might think. Then I go back to the old Greek map, sir, of 5,000 years ago when this entire area was shown. Where do we stop? Article 33 of the UN very clearly states that you should have negotiation, inquiry, mediation, consolidation, arbitration, etc. before doing these funny things. So I would tend to laugh at it, sir. As General has rightly pointed out, there is a convergence of issues that point out that this man has lost his marble. I wouldn't take it too seriously. But, but you know, but the point, of course, <clears throat> here is, uh, and let me get in Manisha at this point, uh, you know, we've been seeing how only has been, uh, you know, falling out of favor uh, with the people of Nepal, of course, the opposition of Nepal, also his own allies. Now, obviously, there are people within his party, within his own cabinet, who are deferring with him quite openly. You know, is this quite a sorry state of affairs about how Nepal is also being governed, uh, Manish? You know, and does this also once again indicate that it seems Oli's time is up? He may try and drag it, but it won't drag for long. It's being missed. Hi, uh, hi there. Uh, thanks to our panelists. They have already spoken their mind out. And the point which you have raised, I just come up in one line. It's a, a, a small nation is actually uh, put up a, a big issue, uh, not for uh, its own country, but also for uh, the Indo-Nepal uh, diplomatic relations. So I will say rather that sooner or later, uh, only government will embarrass itself in, in a broader daylight. Because going to UN uh, is just a, a, a day-long news. That's it. It's not that, uh, it's just about diverting from the larger issues which are happening in the Indo-Pacific. And, and I, I must tell you that if a country like Nepal, which is trying to uh, poke in Indian uh, territory by uh, either taking, uh, beating up uh, some Bihari uh, residents on the border or by just threatening that we are not building up a barrack, army barrack, or doing all sorts of things that we are taking this to Nepal. It's not what Oli is doing. Oli is just paying back whatever money he has taken from China. So he has to actually show that, okay, I'm building up this pressure on this front, so I will keep this thing going on. But the, the difference of opinion is growing within the party, and more and more people are now raising the anti oli bogey that we are also... You, what have you done? If you ban Indian media in Nepal, that doesn't mean that they can't get it. They are getting more on the social media. And they are becoming more. You can't gag media like that. So there are lots of issues uh, uh, there which are happening. And, and mind you, I'm, I'm pretty much sure, Pramit has already uh, uh, said this, I'm pretty much sure that India is watching. India will first watch that how much damage within the party itself happens first. Then they will play their cards because they are also occupied somewhere else. And I'm very much sure that any wing in the Nepal and the smaller, uh, uh, this, this part is actually uh, watching this issue very closely. So it's time for them that they should also be briefing their uh, uh, friends and allies. And also they should start 
explain their diplomacy card in the U.S. It's actually, if that is the case, and we know that China has already corrupted WHO, China has already corrupted UNSC, China has already corrupted God knows what all departments. So maybe this is also the China ploy that, okay, you uh, put up the maps in the UN, I will put up someone on the pie. So we have to actually see that where the problem is coming from and where it will end. So let's, let's fix our targets. That's how we are going to handle it. But nothing to worry, because this is one internal matter of uh, Nepal um, today, and I've covered it. That is how Nepal is governed. Nepal is the Jamburi. Rather, I'll say that China is in every part. So it, I've, I've covered it since 2008, and I know uh, how Prachanda also lost it after having such a majority, because he opened so many fronts that he could not uh, control uh, even one. So he lost it. And now he is now uh, riding uh, another vehicle to be in power and all. So they all are, you know, there everyone wants to have his or her share of power. So they can actually come together as a confederation of parties to come be in power. So we don't have to worry about that. Let him only handle this himself. And uh, uh, let's handle art on the larger platforms where we can actually uh, pull up uh, a diplomatic coup against Nepal or the plot. So we have to work there better rather than seeing our time in Nepal. Is it, we is have to quite, keep... is it quite uh, fair and pragmatic to say that Oli's days are numbered? Despite him clinging on to the chair ambassador Bora, despite him delaying uh, the, the meetings of the, uh, of the party, uh, do we believe that his days are numbered? Is that a pragmatic, fair assumption to make? As an observer analyst, I would say yes. It seems that his time is running out. He's trying desperately to cling to power. He's using all the influence of his father-in-law, a nation called China, uh, forgetting that China too has gobbled up some of Nepal's territory. He doesn't speak about it. So we all know he was trained there. He is loyal to his mentors, his lords and masters. He'll do what they tell him to do. Otherwise, they will publish all the documents that they have against him. So it's very, very clear that his days are numbered. You can't, as a little mouse, be provoking the elephant which is next to you for too long, you risk being trampled. Not that we are going to trample Nepal. You know, we were the first country to respond when they had an earthquake in 2015. The then prime minister said, we are blessed to have a neighbor like Nepal. Everybody and sent in condolences, we sent in relief material. I believe our record, our track record is very clear. Mr. Oli is an aberration. And the dustbin of history is open at this time to welcome him. Sir. Okay. All right, I'm being told, uh, yes, okay, Manish, quickly go ahead and then... I just want to add what, um, I just want to add what uh, Ambassador said. Uh, the latest is that even Nepali Congress, which is the Grand Old Party of Nepal, is also trying every bit to be, uh, the come in power, even if they have to uh, form an alliance with Prachanda. So, uh, so they can uh, dump, or if the party goes like that, the entire party can dump only and uh, form a different coalition sort of state. So... We have to see that how long Oli survives, because as long as the Chinese money is floating around and they are enjoying it because they are taking the money, so they have to show. But the moment the money is over and the new tranche of money comes, it's who has paid will uh, uh, will matter. So we have to see that how Nepali uh, politics plays the card, uh, and I'm, I'm sure that uh, Nepali Congress will play a very, very crucial role in all right, let me uh, bring in at this point uh, Pramit Pal Chaudhary once again on the broadcast, if he's able to hear me. Pramit, uh, please go ahead. Uh, you know, your assessment of, of course, this double speak coming from Nepal. Uh, does this show once again that Oli is not in control? What should India make of it? Pramit, go ahead. Well, I think what we're going to I, I see the decision on the UN, uh, UN maps to essentially be um, an act of desperation. It's a completely pointless action. The UN issues maps of its own, which are very clearly labeled that we take no position on any of the disputes among our member states. They have no legal standing whatsoever uh, in the international system. And the UN rightly can't possibly take a position uh, between members, between its own members on any physical uh, issue. So they are totally irrelevant what maps you send uh, to, to the United Nations. Um, second, I think, as others have mentioned, Oli is on, in trouble. He's lost his majority of parliament. Uh, he's now seen opposition parties slowly build up. 
uh, in against him, including within his own party. Hello. Hello. Um, I think we can hear you perfectly. Yes, go ahead. Uh, you can unmute yourself and then go ahead. We'll, we'll see. Um, yeah. yeah. Right. Well, so we can see um, uh, Modi at uh, Oli is now facing, as you know, internal problem. India can, can afford to be patient. No prime minister in Nepal lasts very long. Uh, we saw Yamin in the Maldives. We saw the first Rajapaksa government. Both of them tried to take on India. Uh, within a couple of years, they fell apart, uh, partly because of Indian action, but partly because largely because of domestic opposition. Uh, both of them had received considerable support from China. In the end, it did not work. Oli is in a much weaker position than either Rajapaksa or Yamin were in their homelands. Uh, and as, as we've mentioned, his own party is slowly disintegrating on people. So I don't see any problem. And I think to some degree, he's deliberately trying to provoke India into doing something that can allow him to survive longer. And this is something we have to make sure that we do not do. Okay. Uh, Meet General Zividi, uh, come back in here. You know, on, on of course, uh, uh, China also continuing to exert influence. China also is doing everything it can to obviously save Oli. Um, because if Oli goes, then the, then the foreign policy of Nepal will change as well. Is that also a fair assumption? That if Oli goes, um, you know, say a president or, or anyone else who may come in may not be the kind of puppet that China will want in the prime minister's chair in Nepal. Yes, a very important point, and I like I was in fact uh, contemplating this uh, issue as such. So you have preempted rather the whole uh, debate. You see, uh, the point is that only all agenda, they are the front faces. The Communist Party is actually the key player, and Communist Party is being controlled by China. So therefore, I would say that what is going on, the front face, either only or agenda, is only of little consequence, what we need to do is to keep a deeper eye as to how China is manipulating these people. That is very important. And second important issue is that we need to guard against two very important uh, factors. Our relationship with Nepal are based on two very salient, I would say, connect. One is the people-to-people -people connect, which Chinese would try to actually inflict upon this. And second is army-to-army, we discussed the issue yesterday that we have a very strong bonding with Nepalese two army because there are 40,000 Nepalese soldiers serving with us. And there are, I think, more than a couple of lakhs of ex-servicemen whom we are paying the pension. 300 crores every year, we are paying the pension. Now, these two are very strong connect, and we should ensure that they are not actually inflicted upon by China. And the Chinese policy is very important because China, at, as such, is opening the third front. And that third front, we should not allow it to succeed. We should retrieve back the situation, but keep a very close ear to the ground and see how these two are being manipulated. And you asked a very pertinent question. Will there be you know, paradigm change in the policy if Oli replaces the agenda? I would say it will be only cosmetic change. But largely, the policies may remain the same, but uh, Pachanda may not be so overtly hostile towards India. All right. Uh, let me uh, quickly uh, get back to Ambassador Vora as well at this point. Ambassador Vora, uh, you know, vis-a-vis uh, -vis Nepal, of course, what should be India's uh, policy now going ahead? Uh, you understand, of course, uh, diplomacy very well. Uh, diplomatically, how should we handle Nepal currently? I believe we have handled it extremely well. We've been very measured and restrained in our responses. Mr. Oli has used vituperation against us. He's claimed the law, drama, etc., etc. We've not done that. We've been very, very correct. And we said there is no historical evidence for all this nonsense he's talking about in terms of their maps and their territory. So one issue that I've had before I conclude is that the importance of personality in policy should not be overemphasized. One individual who comes to power can make some difference for a brief period of time. But ultimately, it's the convergence of circumstances, trends, and interests that will bring relationships back on an even keel. We've seen this with many countries. There could be temporary blips 
as Mr. Odi is. But the people-to-people -people relationship, as General Saab talked about, the relationship between the militaries, the economic linkages are just so strong that neither Mr. Oli nor his grandfather nor his great-grandfather can ever make a lasting impact on that. Indeed. Uh, and, you know, uh, very quickly, Manish, uh, uh, before we, of course, uh, you know, uh, shift to, of course, the last uh, phase of our, uh, of our broadcast, you know, uh, vis-a-vis, of course, this, this statement coming in from a cabinet member of uh, Oli, are now efforts being made within his party on who will be his successor? So you have various people, of course, speaking up because there will be various claimants to the PM's chair if Oli were to finally go. Today, but more than that, I think the Nepali Congress is very much keen and the regional parties who number about 20, 20, 20 odd seats, I think. Uh, and they together, along with Prachanda, they are trying to make a, a different coalition. So, so we have to see that uh, how uh, it all shape up. And as General and uh, Ambassador, they both said about people-to-people -people contact. You know what? One leader cannot define the politics of Nepal. We have 30 percent Madhesis of the 20, uh, this uh, 27 million population of Nepal. So we have to see that how much uh, uh, we have our influence. We have a long 1,200 kilometer border with Nepal. So, so, so 30 percent plus, they said, the army uh, angle uh, general uh, mentioned. I will add one more angle, which uh, both of them didn't mention, and that is very crucial. Lord Pashupatinath Temple is the epicenter of all India-Nepal relations. Whether you call it the spiritual connection or whether you call it uh, the religious and all that, because we have that connect, which even comes up to right from Nepal to the families which are staying in Banaras. So it, 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 it is actually a drawing room discussion which happens, which is happening there, which is also uh, equaling up in Banaras or in the entire Bihar and the Eastern UP. Okay. So it's not we that only will get away with that so time. easily. We're completely yeah. out of time. My thanks to all of you for joining us on this particular debate. For more such videos, subscribe to the NewsX YouTube channel, hit the bell icon.